Well, Sean, first it was undefeated, and now it's unranked. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know what that, what that jersey means, why don't you explain it to them? Yeah, just an unranked champ. Uh, the rankings have always kind of been just uh, something not super important to me. Um, this is my 15th fight, so unranked champ with, with the number 15, but it'll be 15 and 0. Simple. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the way that you troll back to your, your, your trolls, you know, by, by saying that you're definitely undefeated and that you're the unranked champ. But I like it because it seems genuine, like this is how you truly believe. Like you do feel like you're still undefeated in this sport. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that, that fight, the, I didn't feel like I lost because he, his skills were better. Um, I don't think he truly, truly thinks he won that fight. That, the way that fight played out was just, uh, it, it was, it's a rare, rare occasion that that happens. Um, you know, look at how many times I got kicked in the leg last fight against Chris. How many times I got kicked in the leg against Thomas. You didn't see my, my whole leg go completely numb from their toes or their shins. It, it, it was a crazy, crazy thing that happened. Uh, I don't feel like mentally I lost that fight. Uh, you know, I go out there, have a rematch, and he beats me in a decision or finishes me completely fair square. I have no issue saying I lost the fight. I lose in sparring, I lose in, in grappling. It's like, I'm not worried about losing. I just don't feel like I lost that fight. And a lot of people hate that I say that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, the, the merch kind of just, it sells itself. People, the Sugar fans love it. And the, the people that hate it comment so much. And, and you know, they're, they're helping me out in a way, so. And, and so with this one, the unranked champ, do you, do you feel like the champ of the UFC? Is that what you're saying? I just feel like the champ when it comes to, uh, you know, I think Peter Peter Jan's the champ right now. He he's beat the people he's needed to beat to become the, the champ in the UFC. Um, I just feel like I'm the people's champ. I, I I think I have more eyeballs on me in the bantamweight division than anyone, um, and that's what I consider the champ. I'm, I'm the most entertaining. I got the most eyeballs. Uh, people care about me the most. That's that's what the champ is to me. Hmm. So I guess if that's what the champ means to you, then what what does the actual UFC championship mean to you then? Um, the double champ, I guess. No, uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Right now, like I said, Peter's the champ. I respect him as the the bantamweight champion. Um, he's one of the best pound for pound for pound, and I think you know getting that fight someday is is gonna be sweet. I think it'll be a legendary fight. I think it'll be a huge fight. Um, not, I'm I'm worried about the fight ahead of me every time. I'm not really looking forward to too far so um, I got pie on my mind right now yeah and when you look at um, what you've accomplished so far in the UFC um, there's kind of like two schools of thought like some people think like Sean's up and comer he's, he's got all the potential in the world and then there's the other people who say he hasn't fought anybody yet I, like where are you in terms of like between those two schools of thought yeah um, I, I'm gonna go out there and fight Paiva and he's he's a dangerous opponent He's one of the you know tougher guys I've fought for sure, uh, but it doesn't matter. I go out there and finish him, and that's what's supposed to happen. It's the Sugar Show. I'm supposed to go out there and finish him. It's almost a lose lose in a sense, uh, except for I'm gonna get paid. I'm gonna make a good amount of money, and it's you know it's a win for me. Uh, you, Thomas Almeida was he, he was a tough dude. Eddie Wineland was a tough dude. Chris, we found out he was really tough. Um, I don't, yeah, it, it, it doesn't really matter to me what people say. I haven't fought anyone. I could go out there and knock out Habib, and people will say, yeah, but you haven't fought Francis. It's, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people think. Uh, I'm going to continue to just do what I do. Yeah. I mean, th those high expectations, though, do they ever start to wear on you a little bit? Like you said, like, like it is risky almost every time you fight because you don't have as much to gain. Like, you move to, you get your seventh win in the UFC, it's almost like you're still on your sixth win. Like, what's the difference, right? Is, is there that, like, kind of, does that weigh on you at all be before these fights? No, not really. I've, I've done. A, I've learned a lot through. I've been in the UFC since I was 22. Uh, I learned a lot in those last five years that I've been in the UFC to not care what people think. You know, I've been very active on all social medias. You can't care what people think. So I just learned over the years not to really care what people think. I go out there and lose to Paiva. It's like, you know, I still got, I still got my house. It's almost paid off. I still got my other house. It's almost paid off. I still got my family my friends like my life's still good win or lose my next fight it doesn't matter it, it does matter in, in, in a sense but not to my happiness really like 
I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my routines and what I've got going on in life that it, I don't really feel that extra pressure. I don't put that pressure on me. Like, I gotta win this fight or people are gonna think I suck. I don't, I don't care, you know what I mean? I, and I believe in my skills. I'm gonna go out there and put Paiva away. So it's, it, it, I don't really feel pressure. I don't really get nervous for fights. Um, I think I found a good mentality leading into fights. Yeah, that makes sense. In, in terms of your career though, it does feel like you're really building something. You know, yeah. you, you win this fight, you 3-0 in 2021, potentially with three finishes if you're able to finish this guy. Like, what do you feel like you're building? Both both like professionally and also just like, I mean, of course you're, you're working your way towards a title, you're working your way towards a ranking, but like, what do you feel like you're kind of building right now? I want to I do super fights. Like I want every one of my fights to be a main event pay-per-view and be pushing that million dollar buy. So that, that's, that's what I want. Um, and you know, that comes with knocking people out and doing what I do. Um, some people have 18 fights in the UFC and they're not even in the top 10 yet. You know, I've had seven fights, or six fights, six finishes. But, um, I didn't finish soccer mom, but you know, I'm getting there slowly. I'm tw I just turned 27 years old. Uh, I'm, I'm building to mega fights. I want to. I want to. I want to fight twice a year, huge fights. That's what I want to do, and I think I'm on a good progression towards that. What uh, what, what can you say about Paiva? Why was he the opponent, and, and and how are you kind of breaking him down? Um, that's who they offered me. I think when they offered me, he was number 15. He was ranked number 15, um, and that kind of kind of pleases the fans a little bit. It's all everyone wants me to do. Uh, Steve will do it. Message me. He said, "I'll give you a hundred thousand if you fight your next opponent's rank." I'm like, I mean, that, that perfect. They offered me number fifteen ranked Paiva. Um, I think t a week, two weeks later, he wasn't ranked anymore, um, and it really, really didn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I go out there, knock him out, whether I get ranked or not. I truly don't care. Like, people are gonna watch me fight regardless. And if they say, you know, oh, you're not, you're, who, who is this guy you're fighting? It's like, don't watch then. Good luck. Everyone wants to watch me fight. Whatever reason it is, um, everybody watches me fight. They can't not watch me fight. If I'm on, if they know I'm fighting on a certain time, seven o'clock in Vegas, they're gonna, they're gonna be they're gonna tune in and watch. It doesn't matter who it is. Mm -hmm. Well, you were a little familiar with him, right? Because he fought your your teammate Kyler. How, how familiar, I guess, were you with him? I watched that fight. Um, you know, in my mind, Kyler won that fight. If not, it, it, the worst would have been a draw. I felt like Kyler won that fight. Kyler dropped him, um, the, and Piva got a, you know, he got the judges on his side. So I'm gonna go out there. And I know he's tough. Like and we've, I've proved that I can can fight tough guys. Like he, but he's very skilled too. You know, Chris was extremely tough, not as skilled. You know, I think Piva's just as tough, more skilled. Uh, it's a great test for me. But I plan on going out there and putting his lights out. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you said you don't want to look forward too much, but. You, you do, you are good about calling guys out. What, what's, like when you start to look at that top 10, what's more, uh, what, what gets you going more? Is it kind of like those big names that we've, that you, you've, I mean, you've basically grown up watching, like Frankie Edgar, Ho Jose Aldo, Dominic Cruz, or is it some of like those newer guys, like the San Hagans, Rob Fonts, obviously, uh, you know, the champ, Piotr Jan, Aljamain Sterling, like which of those, which of those kind of two tiers interests you more? God, I want, I want to fight Peter. I know he's a champ, and I know I got the, you have to beat certain people to get to that fight, but uh, that's a fight that I want um, eventually. That's kind of the end goal. Even if he's not champ, like that's a fight I want. I think he's, he's one of the best pound for pound, probably top three uh, pound for pound in the world, and I, I just think that's a sweet fight. I love, how, I love his style, his boxing, the way he switches stances, covers up, his defense. Like, he's, just, he's so good. I think that's a fight that I really want. Uh, but, but as far as like, say I go out there and KO Paiva, um, I don't know, I, I do a pretty good job, we'll see. Last time I, you know, said Dominic Cruz is ducking me, which is kinda, I mean like, it's like, hey, you wanna fight Sean O'Malley on the main card? Or you wanna fight Pedro Munoz on the prelims? And he, he picked prelims Pedro, so it's, that fight's not there. Cody went to 25, how come? Probably because of me, that's what I, that's what I like to think. Um, Rob Font fighting Jose Aldo, so it's, there's a lot of options. Um, I have three fights on my contract. After this, I'll have two more. You know, it's it's not like I have all to say anyway. It's not like I'm going to tell the UFC if they offer me Cody or Pedro or Domino or whatever. It's like I'm, I can't say no. I want to wait till my contract ends. I got to, you know, they're going to offer me what they offer me. So we'll we'll see. It it, it it depends on how I go out there and perform. 
When did Piotr Jan really become that guy for you? Where you're like, man, that, that looks like a really fun fight. How long um, ago was that? Uh, probably the Aldo fight. The Aldo fight was super impressive. Um, Aldo fight was super impressive. Every fight, every time he gets in there, it's, it, it's impressive. He's got a... I like his humor too. Like he, he's, it's it's funny. And, you know, obviously the language barrier, but I enjoy his comedy on on Twitter. It calls me poodle. Stuff. I just, it's just like I find him very funny. Yeah. Um, and he's like I said, one of the best. So pro probably the Aldo fight. I was like, this guy's he's a real deal. What do you think it's it's gonna take to beat him? Beat him? Yeah. Uh, strategy, game plan. You gotta you gotta. He, he's very he's very smart with his energy. Um, yeah, strategy, coming in good shape, and, and knowing, knowing when to use that energy because he knows when to use his energy. He knows what he's doing in there. He's calculating, but uh, yeah, I think a lot of film maybe. I'm not really a film guy. I don't watch too much, but you know, at that level against Peter, I think that would be you know, film, strategy, five fives. I still haven't done five five minute rounds. Uh, it, it'll be uh, interesting. You threw your name in the hat to fight him in October. Did you actually think that that was a possibility? or? I thought it was like a 2% possibility. Like I wasn't in training camp, but I was those, those two, three days where it was up in the air where no, we didn't know. Um, I was, I went right, I was on my, I was doing my sprints, hitting, doing, doing the myths. It was like a two, three day period where it was, you know, it was Saturday night, I didn't have a cheat meal. I was eating, I was like, it could happen. It would have been way harder of a fight because it would have been a short notice fight. Like the, Corey went out there and did, did awesome for the time he was given to fight him. Uh, I thought it was a small chance, but I was, uh, you know, it was a way to win for me. Go out there, lose to Peter, that makes the rematch even sweeter with a full camp. So I, I was, I was serious about taking the fight. Obviously, I would have, would have taken it if they said yes. You seem like, you seem like you're the kind of guy who would almost be like rooting for, for Peter until you end up fighting him. You know, like, like you, you said whether he's the champ or not, you want to fight him someday. But like, you kind of want him to be scary. You kind of want him to be perfect. Do you, do you feel that sometimes when you're watching him fight? Uh, yeah. When he fought Corey, it was funny. I was, you know, I was doing my sparring. It was Saturday. It was in Abu Dhabi, so it was like 1 p.m. here. I was literally sparring in the cage, doing my rounds for my fight while they were on the TV fighting. Uh, it was cool. It maybe it was like. You got me fired up. But yeah, when I was Corey versus Peter, I, I wasn't going for Peter, I wasn't going for Corey. I like both of them, I'm fans of both of them. Uh, I, you know, I, I went back and rewatched the fight that night and it was a sweet fight. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't see anyone, I don't, I don't see uh, who's gonna beat Peter other than me. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you're ready for that I think right I, now? Yeah, I, I can compete with Peter. I think uh, he has more high level experience with guys, although, uh, Corey, you know, I don't even remember, he fought Uriah. I think he's got more high-level experience, but I think I'm just a different animal. Got to ask you about this, this infamous meeting that you posted on Instagram uh, at the Chargers game. How did, oh. how did this uh, happen where you ended up sitting there talking to Conor McGregor? Um, that's a good question. I was signed with a gaming company called Complexity Gaming, who's owned by the Cowboys. And I think uh, Connor's got something, something in there with the Cowboys. And uh, we were at the Cowboys game, and he came. It, we just were in, happened to be in the same suite. He came down, finally got to meet him. It's been a long time. Like I've seen him at the on fight week, and I, like that's not the time to talk to Connor, you know, especially not right off the scale. Uh, it was cool, you know. I've watched watched his whole career play out, and. Um, I've learned a lot from him outside what not to do, what to do, inside the cage, certain techniques, mindset, mental warfare. Just, I've learned a lot from Connor, so it was cool to be able to, he's probably the only person I could say I've ever kind of looked up to in a way that I've, you know, like, like that, damn, I want to be, I want to be that, that big. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to change the sport like Connor did. So it was cool to meet him. Um, I had a short conversation. It was very loud in there. A lot of people were, I, I thought it was funny. I took the audio away. I think even with the audio, you couldn't really heard what we were saying, yeah. but I knew taking the audio away a lot of, it would just cause, cause a lot of controversy. But yeah, it was good. Had a good little short talk and uh, I want to see him come back and, you know, win a fight. So he came up to you? Um, he walked, he walked in and we just saw each other. He obviously knows who the sugar show is. I'm, yeah. I'm the second biggest draw in the UFC. He knows who I am. He watches the fights. Um, yeah, he, he said, you know, great, great performance. Your last fight, 
You know, we didn't, we didn't say, it, was, we, it wasn't a long conversation. It was, like I said, it was loud, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, he might have had a couple shots of proper 12, <laughs> maybe. Or, he's got a thick accent, especially when he's been buzzed <laughs> up a little bit. Um, yeah, it, it was cool. Did he, uh, did, was there anything like you wanted to ask him? Like, was there anything that was on your mind of like, oh, if I ever, when, when I meet Conor McGregor, I'm gonna ask him this? No, I, I didn't think of, uh, no, there wasn't any specific questions. It was, no, I, I, I hadn't thought that much into it. Well, before we let you go, you win this fight. What do you think, like, 20, so 2021, we're talking about you building a foundation for something. What do you think 2022? is going to be like that chapter of your career yeah i mean the t 2020 to 2030 is like it's my whole era it's the sugar era 2020 was a, was a fantastic year for me it was a great year for me 2021's been you know amazing as well uh 2022 i see myself getting back in there first quarter next year um it just it just continuing to do what i'm doing it, i don't this game you can't look too far ahead there's injuries that happen people pull out be the COVID, you know, there's just stuff that can happen that is just hard to, and I've learned, I learned that going into that Cheeto fight. Like I already had plans, I had big plans. I didn't plan on my perennial nerve getting tapped by a toe and get my foot going completely numb. Um, so I've, I've kind of learned to just pull back from thinking too far ahead. Um, but yeah, I think if, if I had to say what's good, what's next, what's the beginning of 2022 is, is probably March get another fight, whether it's top 15, top 10, not ranked, don't care. I just, I love going out there and performing. Um, you know, it's, perform, it's performing is what, what, what I love the most, is going out there, live T-Mobile arenas, screaming. I know there's a million people watching live, and it's just, that's what, that's what I love, is performing for people. So as long as I can go in there and fight, it doesn't really matter who it is. Yeah, well, you've had some big nights in T-Mobile, so we're yeah. looking forward to another big one on thank December you. 11th, man. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.